Hey everyone, welcome back to the Binding of Repentance. This is going to be the last of my point episodes where I check out the updates like sooner, you know, more on time, more prompt for the viewers. And we're going to play as Tainted Eve on this one, who hasn't got a huge change to her character. So the two changes are the clots no longer lost when we call by some Tori if she has full health. Instead, they will drop to the ground next to her. I like it. And Tainted Eve's clots now start with 15 HP when spawned and will decay down to 1 HP or 5 HP for non-red hearts. That's basically it. So I just want to see how this plays out. I never really appreciated how good like the 15 HP was on the clots. I don't know what the clots HP were before, but they don't seem to be able to stay around for longer. So I think that very old episode where it had a hedgehog build with Tainted Eve I think is over now. But I just want to see what her power level's like. I, I feel like this is more of a a quality of life thing than a buff or a nerf, but we had to check it out. There is one other character, I mentioned this before, that has had changes of the Tainted characters, and that's Tainted Eden. I'll go over him at the end, in fact I think I'll go through the entire patch notes at the end of this video, and I'll timestamp it in the description when I go through it, just to see what my opinions are, because a lot of them are changes to items. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into a run. Tainted Eve, by the way, we have done certain things in the post-it note, here's my seed. We're looking for the light path, we're looking for Hush, uh, Delirium, Boss Rush, Mega Satan. You know, just those few things. Anyway, so right, we start off with two health, from what I remember, and when we hold our health down we get clots. So as I understand it now, my clot is decaying. What I don't quite get, by the way, is the clot decaying. Oh, actually, no, I do get it. I get the reason behind it now. I was going to say, if I just pull it back, then he will go back to full health again when I summon him. Which is true, but I guess this is just to stop me summoning, like, an army of clots. And just terrorizing the run with it, which is basically what I've done before. I'm trying to be very careful not to be hit by this guy, because I think he was leaving on half a heart. Right, we'll summon a clot. This is going to be a proof of principle. So if I summon Torium now, yes, the clot stays here. There you go, there's the big change. <laughs> I, I think this is a nice quality of life thing. But he's now decaying health. I don't know what rate. And it's going to be kind of hard to, to test this, honestly, in the game. I'm going to have to just purely speculate. When I see them getting hit. Well, right now, they're not. If it's, like, per room, then this is fine. It still leads to some interesting synergies. You can get, like, health gain items. Like Yum Heart, for example. Ah, I can see the clock decaying. The, the sprite changes. So I'm going to presume now that it's a different sprite altogether. That it's at one health. So was this, like, three or four rooms I did? With you out. Yeah, and he got one hit. Okay. Cool. I don't like it, I don't dislike it. I, I, I do like the idea, though, that, you know, you're not going to be wasting your blood clots anymore if you're at full health. That is a great quality of life improvement. Is it worth it to trade for the decay thing? I don't know. <laughs> My gut feeling is no. I feel like it might be a slight nerf to do this, but what do I know? Uh, I don't want to play the curse room right now. I'm on one and a half hearts, I think. Also, where's the secret room? My gut feeling is here. I thought this thing blew up eventually. Okay, it does. I remember this item. I don't really like it. It's okay. I'll use it as a three room bomb mostly, I think. Right, the pin. The champion variant of pin. Who does a little swirly shot. Just get away from me. Hiding in the corner. I, 
I think my criticism of this character, by the way, if I was going to have one, is that they're pretty weak at the start. I guess unless you get a bunch of red heart drops immediately. By the way, what's my clock doing right now? I can't really see it. The clock has decayed. Okay. I should have some Torium then. So it is on a timer. It's not room by room basis. Be careful. Okay, nice kill. Hide behind here. Oh, I shouldn't have picked that up actually. I was at one heart. Nice. Fine. Great. It's incredible. I believe in pills. If you see... Again, only in Isaac. If you see a pill, you take the goddamn pill. Unless you're on an insane run. In which case, you know, don't threaten your run on that. Oh, interesting. My clock doesn't have Are You a Wizard. So I should be watching this plot. In fact, let me bring up a timer. I did say I was going for push slash boss rush. I'm trying to see if the sprite gets smaller if it just suddenly goes and dries up into a little, you know, dried blood clot. Okay. I think he's he dried out. So he's doing it like once every maybe 30 seconds. He's decaying. So let's say it's like once every two seconds. I think it's ticking down by one health. Honestly, we should get some clocks going. So I'm incentivized right now to to summon my red clots and then just Suntorium again. Like now, I should Suntorium again immediately. Okay, I can trade... Well... I was going to say, I can trade for bombs. This isn't exactly quick, by the way. Oh my god, it wasn't the secret room. I could trade that for a bomb, which would have been okay. The nice thing about this, though, actually, is that I don't feel stressed out to, you know, not just hold my fire down when I walk into a room and accidentally generate a clot when I don't mean to, then have some Torium it, potentially losing some clots. Get back in me. Just immediately start holding down. Okay. I didn't mean to get a Spirit Heart one. So the Spirit Heart one should decay to 5 health instead. I'm not going to test it, but... That's what the patch notes say. Uh, just generate some dudes. Okay, I'm going to check if this is a secret room or not. I think immediately, like, boss rush and push out the table. Just because of what I'm doing right now. Unless I get Mumma Mega. Yes. I don't have a bomb. Okay, we need a battery. Or something similar. Hmm, Stonies. Stonies, you're kind of harshing my vibe. Right. Now I tap shoot. And I just try to let my clocks not die. I'm trying to arrange them together, but it's not very easy with the Stonies. You know what? Just get inside me again. I'll just do it as me. Hey, I learned something new today. Tainted Eve. Kind of hard counter by the Stonies. It's fine. I'll take that. Thank you. And we'll start generating some more friends. Another mild criticism I've got for this character right now is that I'm kind of watching my health bar and it's taking a bit of my vision off dodging. Not right now because, you know, I've summoned enough dudes. So maybe I should be summoning dudes when I walk into the room. I mean, not right now, but... Or maybe I just risk it? Nah. That's stupid. I, I think the optimal play, although it's not great for boss rush, would be to summon the guys in the previous room and then just walk into it. But I guess the first one started decaying then. I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. I'll give that to this character. It's very interesting. Uh, okay, I'm going to put you here. I'm not interested in Cursed Eye, in all honesty. Sackhead, though, is consumables. 
And I like consumables. See? Two pennies. Consumables. Okay, we'll check up here now to see if this goes to the boss room. It probably does. My next question should be, do I want to... Fight Meg Satan. I probably should do because I'm going to forget me now on this floor anyway. In fact, I'm going to go fight the boss now. Potentially a little bit of an annoying boss here. Double monstro. They could wrangle me into a corner and put me in a little bit of a tight spot. Also, they have a pretty good chance of clearing my clocks if I'm not careful. Like, the front one's now decaying. Just focus. I've lost track of which one I was shooting at as well, by the way. Pretty perfectly broke them down, by the way. Equally. Right, here is now the interesting thing. So, I, before, would just do this. Then this. Pick this up. Then this. And walk around with the clots. I'm going to go for Mega Satan, by the way. But there's no reason, to, not necessarily a reason to do this now, but I'm actually punished for doing this to some extent. If I Sumptorium, they come back. Do they stay decayed though when I do it? Can I just mash the Q button? No, they are still little weenies. Okay. That's, honestly, I, I kind of like the change. It stops me becoming a one-man army. Because I felt like the problem with Tainted Eve, and it was kind of a minor problem, was that... What was the, the, the problem? The problem is that as soon as he got started with her, it felt like she was extremely strong. I mean, all you have to do is look at the post, you know. I knocked out Beast and Mother with her, like, very early. Like, I felt strong multiple times. And I think the only times we've lost runs is when we died, like, on the first war. One thing that does lead to another interesting little mechanic, by the way, is if I feel like one of my little dudes is going to be shot at, I could some Torum to make them disappear briefly. Yeah, I could make I could use some tones to make them disappear briefly. Which is pretty interesting. It's an interesting concept. It's like it adds a little bit of skill to the game. You just sit there. I'll trade bombs for sacks. It's honestly now worth going to the shop as well. This is... I, I never know what Pandora's box does. And it's something I really need to figure out at some point. I can't actually get it. So I think I'll just take this instead. But I don't know if it's worth, you know, trying to, like, farm extra little bit of coin for or not. You're not worth it. The only... Le oh, actually, I was going to say, I'll try and find the second secret room, but I think it's on that long room. And I, I just don't have time for that. I think I would lose every single blood clot doing that. So, let's take Forget Me Now, and we'll repeat this floor. This increases my chances, by the way, of getting Mega Satan, because I'm doing an extra floor. And I've now got Angel Precedence. Yep, I'll do that. I have Sackhead. Hmm... Not exactly what I'm after. Right, come on, clocks. See what I mean? I'm trying to protect my clocks by using Q. Tactically. Fly. Come on, fly. You can do it. You can do it. Well done. Uh, I do want that room. And I will go the long way around to get it. Other minor criticism of basically every single tainted character. It's really annoying to have the Q button there. Okay, that's the next floor. I don't want to go there yet. It's so annoying when you pick up a card or something, you accidentally, like, use the card and not your Q item. Help. So I lost some clots then. You don't get many iframes on the clots actually doing that Sumptorium play. It might literally not be worth the mental strain to consider it, but... I don't know. Maybe I'm just a bit of a big weenie. 
Have you ever considered that? But yeah, they sure do pop when, like, you know, things get near them. But we'll generate some more. You know what? The more and more I think about this, the more and more I'm actually content by this. Changes. And you know what? I like rubber cement. We're going to be shooting balls everywhere. Yes. Yes. I, I approve. Game, I like the path you're taking me down. But yeah, it makes health gain items considerably better. Like, even just stuff like, you know, uh, Child's Heart. As this character now, it's, it's still really good. It's not broken, it's just very good. You'd be happy for it, because it's like, it turns health upgrades into damage upgrades. Like, in a really weird way, like a temporary damage upgrade maybe? Is a better way to think about it. Even me. Okay, there was a key plus something. Spirit Heart, hopefully. I'll take that. Would have preferred Small Rock, but... Okay, you're just going to have a nightmare of a time. Well, I, you would have done if my clocks could actually fire on the same axis as me. Right, get together. Cool. Emperor. I like it. I will check out the shop. I also like that, in all honesty. I'm going to blow you up for increased devil deal chance. I'm not going to blow my donation machine. Remember, the donation machine has been changed. It's permanently destroyed if I destroy it. And there might be a situation where I want to donate money to the run. I, I don't know how I feel about that change, actually. It's something I really do want to talk about at the end, and my opinions on it. Because it has nerfed, like, certain items. Like, restock is, like, way worse now, I think. Like, the ability to not, you know... And now you like your shop on a run. Just to like help you get a win, maybe it's a difficult character. I don't know if it was a fair nerf, because you have to rebuild that back up again in the future. But I don't know. Anyway, let's see what's in here. Disappointment. Uh I have 15 coins for the item, but I don't really need to pick it up just yet. I kind of want to get the sack as well. Cool. I'll pick it up just now, just so that I know it's there. I don't forget about it. So this item generates a portal at the start of the floor. It's very useful for the latter game where you just want to skip straight to the boss. And also, I really like it for getting into secret rooms early on, so I don't have to like waste bombs for it. I can just immediately go there, get it. And be happy. Right, I'm gonna generate some new friends. Oh, one thing I should test actually. Oh, these could be destroyed. Did I still have that weedy one now? I can't tell because the sprites are on top of each other. I was. I think I did. I don't think it refreshed him. But I was gonna say, if. Did they come back to me in the same order? You know, they were. Sucks up in with Suntorium. And I think the answer is yes, but I don't know that for certain. You get away from me. Because if it's not, you could potentially refresh them by just mashing Q. And by mashing Q, I mean like getting one mashing Q and so on. Okay, we got an angel deal. That's fantastic news. I'm going to risk it. We got a damage up and a health up. Holy moly, that was pretty good. We lost speed. Uh, again, um, we nearly fucked up, actually. We nearly heavily fucked up. We haven't because we have Sacred Heart and Rubber Cement, which is pretty funny. So, we're going to produce tears that just bounce around for a while and do insane damage. Mentally a bit taxing to remember about Sumptorium, I have to admit. But yeah, I nearly fucked up. I, I need to remember I need bombs for this. My rate of fire is garbage as well. But I can fix rate of fire. There, there are things I can fix with pills. Okay, I'll take the hit. We'll get the key. And frankly, we're laughing. Just trying to think for a second. Is there anything else I wanted here? 
There was a three cent sack in the shop, but I can't do anything about that anymore. I guess we'll keep the Emperor card. Yeah, let's just go down. So this is item room or the boss fight. I don't need to go to the boss fight just yet. Item room is welcome. And I will take Virgo. It is okay. Right, let's generate some dweebs again. Thank you for the bomb. I need to save one bomb, remember that. Remind yourself, you need to save one bomb for the future. Otherwise, you're kind of fucked. And by fucked, I mean you're going to struggle to get the angel deal. Uh, I don't really know why I came in here. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I would probably take Dreamcatcher. You know what, we're not doing boss rush right now. I'll shoot fires and stuff for money. But again, it's another one of those runs where we're checking out the character and like, you know, is this a buffer, is this a nerf? And... I get Sacred Heart, which makes it very hard to tell, because I'm just super strong now. My gut feeling off the first few floors where I didn't have Sacred Heart is that it is a nerf. And it's only a nerf for really the late game where you could get lots of health or something and just, you know, have an army of plots. You can't really do that anymore. Or easily. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll do this. Beep, 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 beep. What are you doing? You have to go this way. Okay, we traded a bomb for two bombs. And a key, I think. What a, a great deal. Uh, you know what? I'm feeling frisky. I've also got an Emperor card, so... That being said, I can't just do it. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. Get away from me. Okay, what is the room? Blank. Not the one I was hoping for. I was hoping for Yera. The card... That's actually a bit annoying. The range up is fine. Okay. Not really worth it, but not too expensive either. We'll, we'll get two hearts back. In fact, I can just do this if I wanted to get the two hearts back. Alright, let's generate some new friends. So if, if I queue this now, I need to separate you somehow. It might be refreshing them, you know. I might be wrong. Maybe it is refreshing them. Maybe it is worth trying to recycle my, like, old scabby ones to give myself fresh ones. Like, always leave, like, some slots open. And then just immediately walk into rooms holding down the attack button. I don't think it's terrible. Anyway, let's go fight the boss. I say we'll go fight the boss. Where's the secret room? Is it here? I blew Pistoni, right? Pretty certain I did. I did one in the shop. Ah, well. It's only like a 2% chance I've missed out. Uh, second secret room is not here. We're just missing a great active item right now. And then... We're, we're happy days. We're Monday, Tuesday happy days. Thursday, Friday happy days. This is pretty pog as well. Gonna take some time. Where I can generate an army of clots, which will be weaker, but it doesn't matter. I still have the army. And a temporary army is better than, you know, no army. Like, I'd rather have a, a mercenary army than, you know, be sending out, like, children to war or something. And this is what we are. We are the mercenary army right now. Roll out. Great boss to get, by the way. We're also going to do ridiculous damage right now, I have to admit. You know what, game? Don't be a coward. Give me your cart. That's what we're after. We're after your cart. Let me generate a ton of 
jump. Yes. Health up. Fine. I'll come back. It didn't put me into an error room, that's the important thing. Uh, a speed up is actually exactly what the doctor ordered as well. Like, we're going to do so much damage when we walk into rooms but right now. And by the way, I, I think I'm happy to have almost all red hearts. Not quite yet. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a god run. Ooh, okay. Yeah, not quite yet, because I'd like to get my second angel deal. As soon as I've got the, the key pieces, I'm happy to trade all this into just red hearts. Especially now that I've got child's heart, I will just be generating red hearts. Like there's no tomorrow. Help. <laughs> oh no, I got blown through the door. My army is gone. Oh well. Why did we fall down, Master Wayne? That's the scenario we're in right now. Okay, immediately another red heart. More red hearts. I didn't generate a thing in time. It's a bit of a waste of half a red heart, but it's fine. Because we have sacred hearts, so nothing matters anymore. Like, literally, the two things we're missing now is a health generation item, which we've actually got on a trinket now. Well, like, an active item. Plus... Wait, Pin, where are you? Plus something a bit more defensive, I guess. But the health item is kind of the defensive tool anyway. Uh, adios, teleport card. I don't think I need you. I don't know what the other thing was. I, I had something actual concrete in mind for what I wanted. It was active item healing. What was the other thing? I, I don't remember. <laughs> I forgot it. I should really go in the curse rooms, but I just don't trust curse rooms anymore. They've slighted me too many times right now. Uh, Hematemesis is not what I'm after. Oh, the key piece. I think it's just the key piece. That's all I'm after. If you're going to give me, like, the true god thing, give me Book of Rev. Okay. I will take Little Chubby. Because why not? No pin. Uh, second secret room. I don't know if this is worth playing, by the way. My gut is telling me no. I'm going to try and get a red heart from it. He did get a red heart from it. Because I'm basically trading away damage for it, and I don't think that's worth it. The, the outcome potentially is a health plus speed upgrade, which would be nice. The downside is potentially losing, you know, a, a huge chunk of damage. I don't want a devil deal, so we're not going to take it. What I am going to do, though, is get this as well. I think dog food is plus one heart, right? I'm just going to go down. Please don't screw me over by giving me low percentage devil deals the entire run. Uh, give me my item room. We might as well take it. I don't like really like the item. I don't fully understand how it works still. I know it's like a Pokeball. That's the gimmick. But I don't respect it. I'm also no longer using Suntorium. If you've noticed. I don't think I need it. Okay, another greed fight. Fantastic. I love fighting every single greed. Does guarantee that we're going to get one more shot, though, with no greed on it. Get away from my friends. Right, I caught one of those dudes just for laughs and giggles, frankly. Please don't all run onto the spikes. Okay, they apparently take no spike damage. News to me. Yes. Uh, 
What is this? Hey, Princess. Sure, I'll take Ace of Spades. We'll go to a big room and we'll Ace of Spades it. Give me the money. Show me the money. I thought it was going to land in the spike pit. I was about to be apocalyptically cross. And I say apocalyptically, I don't really mean it. Thank you. Bunch of keys. I like keys. If I can somehow get away to push, we'll be thankful for that. Watch out for my little friends. The faster we murdered, the better we are. Oh, my clots are dying. Get out of the creep. My brethren, my children, live. Okay, we did okay. Plus, I've got one of these charm now. I should go back for High Priestess. I kind of want to just explore the entire floor because I'm not really doing anything speed sensitive right now. Other than, you know, just wasting my time. <laughs> but I can accept that. Right now, this is an acceptable loss to guarantee a victory. The real super dream, as I've mentioned countless times before, is getting Mega Satan, beating the Lamb, and then also going to beat. Uh, what's his name? What's his face? You know, the guy that lives in the Void? Delirium? Yeah, that guy. If we can beat Delirium on the same run, it'd be super duper news. But then we just have to do Boss Rush Hodge. Plus. Greedy mode, but we won't talk about greedy mode. Okay. Sure. No. Uh, bit of a disrespectful room, frankly. Also a very disrespectful room. How am I getting vulnerability, by the way? Is that Sacred Heart? Does Sacred Heart also give you vulnerability? I don't know. I can only assume so. I thought it was just the damage and homing. Alright, thanks, Clock. I accidentally did that. Please get up. You, they're just murdering every single one of my Clots. I've only got one Clot now. Thanks, Obama. Uh, okay, I'll just stick with this. This is fine. I tried to summon Torium before, by the way, to protect them from going through the turret. Again, so annoying that the card is in the same slot as that Q item. Now, I get why it has to be, because, you know, a limited number of, you know, keys. For, like, a controller, mainly. Not a keyboard. They could have bound it to F. There's nothing on F. Right? Maybe full screen's on F, I don't know. Uh, by the way, get Pokeball. I had nothing in the Pokeball, I thought I did. My bad. My bad. Right, just face the other way, please. I mean, we should take it, I guess. Regeneration seems very powerful for this character. I am starting to lose my buffer of spirit hearts, which is a little bit spooky, but it's fine. Right, 42% chance of a deal with the angel not interested honestly it's not great but it's better than pokeball in my opinion kind of lost where I am by the way in the whole steam things okay I'm just in my army don't worry about it I'm also spewing all the, the gaff Alright, army has been reformed. Can you please die? Thank you, got more scissors. Let's scissor again. Again, I know what I said. Pretty hard to see what's going on right now, by the way. Enemy tears are red, my tears are very red too. But I'm just going to presume things are going well. Okay, big currency dropped somewhere. I see it. Hmm... You know what? I've got 18 keys. And I'll trade a bomb for the other one. I 
I should really always be below max health now that I've got regeneration. I just thought. That's a smart man play. Ooh, random pill. Don't mind if I do. Sure. Sure. You know what? This should be the run where I look after my donation machine too. Plus I can get a, a decent chance to get an angel deal potentially. I'm just going to try and donate everything. I just can't get stuck behind there right now. Take everything you can. 58% well, chance now of angel deal. My donation machine's gone back over 300. We'll take the card. Empress. I like it. It is just a good card. The other thing I should actually think of, when I said before that I wouldn't mind a, a defensive item. I kind of have got a defensive item. My clocks are my defense. Like, I nearly got shot before, and I think I would have got shot for my clocks. So, like, if they're taking hits me, like, I'm, you know, happy. Right, we don't want to go to the mother fight until we're ready. We are probably ready, though. <laughs> I have to admit. I mean, why turn this down? It's a key for two keys. Possibly a key plus a coin. And you realistically don't need keys anymore. Or you need very few keys. Yeah, you don't need as many keys. We have Humbling Bundle now, by the way, so we will get a lot of consumables. Which is fantastic. The now Turbo Dream, like, the High Dream. And I don't want this to be a four-hour-long video, but there is a potential this could be a four-hour-long video. If I can get Arky and, like, restart the run and go for another boss. That being said, who would I go for? Because I'd be blocked out the time sense this thing. So, actually, I don't want Arky. Never mind. I take it back. Don't give it me on this run. Please give it to me on another run when I need it. It would actually be terrible in this scenario. Get away from me. But yeah, turns out having eight or nine, it must be nine, more than nine actually. However many little clocks I've got, having this many sacred heart shots is pretty strong. Again, I'm thankful that you're not taking spike damage. Otherwise, I'd be cross. You might be taking fire damage, admittedly. Okay. I can't get those. Peace. Alright, mother fight. We have 11 bombs, so we have enough for the fight with the angel. I'm actually going to trade a bomb for half a red heart. That's how wacky this run has become. I think it's actually good value. It's a, it's a, a damage up for me. I'm pretty sizable, frankly. I should take that and go. Just follow the clock cloud. You're in there somewhere. Just don't worry about it. We got an angel deal. We want to go on the negative pathway. I think I see me in the mess. Sure. Irrelevant. I approve of this damage, by the way. <laughs> That's insane. The, the spirit fires do nothing for me anymore. We just leave. And now this is where we're going to be happy... Oh, there was a tinted rock. This is where we'll be happy to have the portal from Majid. It didn't give me boss. Unlucky. Eh, I'll blow you up. I missed the statue. I wanted the statue. All right. Consumables are basically worthless right now. But I'm greedy. Definitely the of the seven deadly sins, the one I would probably represent is greed. Like he's not lust. I know that. Gluttony, honestly, has a shout. It's greed, gluttony, I think. Uh, pride, nah, it's not pride. Wrath, hmm. I can get gamer rage every so often, but I'd say I'm a pretty chill person. 
Did he drop? I kind of want to get rid of every single red heart. Did I just get a gold one, by the way? I do. I have a gold one. Cool. Uh, what are the other ones I'm missing? Sloth? Yeah. Probably third place. And Envy. I think that's all of them now. Envy was probably my least. Like, Envy and Pride are probably, like, right down there. Although, you know what? I mean, Pride isn't really, like, Pride in your work, is it? It's just, like... I, I don't know. Pride always strikes me as a weird one. Like, why is Proud the same? It's like, smugness should be the same. It's like, you know, showing off is the same. If you're proud of, like, you've done, like, a, a, a good job's work or something, you fucking celebrate that. Don't let the Bible interfere in this, or, like, you know, the old... Testament. You enjoy it. You know, you've synthesized a new compound that you've been struggling to synthesize in 12 steps instead of 18 steps. Go and pat yourself on the back. You deserve it. Right. Pretty tight room, by the way, for this. Oh, it's just that one. Okay. Phone hand does not bother me. Uh, I guess in my list of things I would have liked for this run, mapping should have been on there. Give it to me. I want all the health I can get. Okay. All the consumables in the world. I guess the only thing that like, could be beneficial to Arky, and I, I don't think I'm going to do this anyway, if I do get it, is that there is an outside chance that I could Arky into Mum and Mega or something on the return run, and then go and fight Hush that way, and then fight Delirium. Or do Boss Rush. I don't know what's more annoying. Probably Boss Rush, actually. So I probably would make this a four-hour-long video. Just on the coping of doing that. Right, Hangman. You know what? <laughs> I might take Hangman over... Uh, what's his name? It's like the, the one few occasions I would do this. I need to check what you do again. I've completely forgotten. I look you up every single time. You're called number six, aren't you? Number magnet. 10% Devil Room chance while hell. Devil Room layouts. It changes the Devil Rooms to have 0 to 3 Devil Deal items, 1 to 3 Black Hearts, and random enemies from the shawl floor. And it prevents scramps from appearing. You're unfortunately a bit too late. And I, I don't really want Devil Deals right now. I'm quite happy getting Angel Deals, frankly. If I got you very early on, I might have considered it. And then just ignored. Trying to do Mega Satan. But we'll, we'll get a run with that trinket at some point. It is on my mind. You are always on my mind. You are always on my mind. Uh, honestly, it's not going to be worth it for me. Again, I'm taking Hangman over Balls of Steel. What is going on in this world? Goodbye. I got hit. I didn't even see it. My clock's just got annihilated, but it's fine. We have some more red hearts. Didn't get a deal again, so we were kind of lucky, honestly, to get... Oh, hang on a minute. That works. We were kind of lucky to get... The deal. Oh, that was actually worthless. Never mind. To get the Meg Satan fight, I could have got screwed over there quite easily. I think I came out on the wrong side of the luck, I think. Again, you didn't give me the boss fight, which is actually what I bought you for, by the way. Just want to remind you that the literal reason we purchased you was to, for you to take me to boss fights. Can I get out this way? Oh, I can. Get away from these spiders. Get away from Taratomas and Tiny Tomas. Again, this shows you my greed. I'm still picking up consumables. I'm on shoal. 
what does it matter right now? Like, what are we going to do with these consumables? What are we going to do with the golden bombs? Like, my tears are better than bombs. But I can't help it. I have to pick it up. I have to pick everything up. You might be saying, well, oh, it's giving you a better point total at the end of the run. I don't care about the point total. Unless I'm doing a daily. Which, by the way, we should probably start doing dailies again at some point. It'd be pretty nice to do that. But until I unlock everything, I don't really mind. I hate you, by the way. Probably one of my least favourite enemies in the shoal, actually. The laser eye. I feel like he normally gets a hit in on me. But this isn't a normal day. Be perished. I'll pick you up. Please be the right path. I mean, this has to be an unlosable run right now, right? Or close to unlosable. I, I probably shouldn't have used that there, but who cares? I don't think I need it for the boss fight. I could go and get a battery charge. Nah. There you go. I used the gold bar and I mistimed it. I think that's the first time in like the entire time I've been doing these Isaac series where I've done shoal runs that I missed the bomb to start with. How embarrassing. Okay, just five shots around. Remember to bounce off walls. Okay, you destroyed all my friends. And for that you shall pay. Okay. Let me go pick up the spirit heart. And I'll be on my way. We, we'll, we'll complete the dark room. If we get insane devil deal items, by the way. And by devil deal, you know what I mean. The the first room. I could be persuaded to trade some red hearts for them. But it'd have to be insane. That's pretty good. I have to admit, that is on the tier list of kind of insane. So is that. But I don't want that. That's actually bad for this character. I'm glad I just thought the numbers through my head. So Abaddon is normally a must take, but it converts all your red hearts to black hearts, and I really don't want that, so. Say no to Abaddon. In this one very specific scenario. Anyway, we do need child heart to get pain down, and we'll be good. You somehow managed to snipe me every single time. I'm kind of impressed. Okay, battery charge. I, I like battery charges. Oh, the army is reforming. Gondor calls for aid. And I get my little hobbits. My little red hobbits. Yeah, sure. Not exactly good, but... Not bad yet either. Again, we have regen. We should be burning our health down a little bit. Okay. Kind of surprised you survived that barrage attack. The pony is still going. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Literally in the corner. Eh, uh, Magician is actually unnecessary. Hangman is basically unnecessary as well now. I just bought it for... A very unique scenario where I wanted flight, maybe desperately. Sure. Uh, there's not a lot to say, honestly, about this run now. We should win. I should beat Mega Satan as well. I would like some more health. But I guess who would want more health? Who wouldn't want a little bit more health? But the damage speaks for itself. And we've played this one pretty well, frankly. I guess my closing like remarks should be on the character player, although this will take a little bit longer. I think overall this character has received a nerf. I know it doesn't look like it right now from what I'm doing to enemies. But that's again just a sacred heart thing. Just a, a small sacred heart thing. But they're they're pretty they're pretty good still. I, I like them. 
On the, the fun tier list, they're pretty high up there. On the good tier list, I think they're a little bit lower now. And I think that's fair enough. A bit like Tainted Cane, but not quite as on, you know, cocaine as Tainted Cane was. They were very strong. Verging on broken, probably, as you, like, you know, progress in the run. Especially if you could get, like, health up items. Or, like, sorry, Red Heart Regeneration Tools. If you're just suddenly, like, a god amongst men. Ah, I say men. What the fuck are these things, actually? Just things. Creepy crawlies. Okay, we're going to fight the boss right now. Because then I at least achieved one thing. And in fact, I already did achieve something. Beating Shoal was an achievement for me. But I always like to knock both things out in the dark path, and we have. We're not doing a victory lap, but you'll knock Strange Key. That's actually what I wanted, a Demon Heart. The thing I'm thankful for is I didn't get a portal. I was hoping for a no void portal. By the way, we should blow this up. The god himself, Eddie, smiling upon me for this run, apparently. Okay, give me the battery charge. Not I, people. Interesting concept for a trinket. I don't want it. A fantastic trinket, by the way, for the loss. You know, to walk into a room and then to walk back out of the room again when you're not happy. Very strong. <laughs> Interesting. Here's a question. And I, I've come to the answer immediately. I was going to say, should I take Abaddon now? And I think the answer is still no, because I have regeneration. Okay. I think this is it. We just go for it. I could have looked for the other secret room, I suppose. It's fine. There's regeneration ticking off. Immediately will scissor. But I'm expecting to burn through these phases pretty quickly. Now, can I see myself to dodge? Not very well. I am yellow, so I, I kind of look like a Simpsons character now that I look at things. So it's not the absolute worst. Watch out for the pony. Watch out for the, the size. Right, watch out for Mega... Brimstone, whatever it's called. Okay, next phase. You're going to get annihilated and just throwing that out there. By the way, I'm tap shooting because I want the health. We are almost out of little friends, unfortunately. But I think my tears is just good enough. Right, take out the Brimstone enemies. Take out the keeper. Just keep hiding. Bomber boy, please leave me alone. Angels. We're used to taking out angels. We've done it two times already. Hide in the corner. Apologies, by the way, if you can hear my tapping. My keyboard is pretty close to the microphone. That was an appalling dodge. I deserve to get hit then. I, like, I stood along the diagonal and just ran along it. I was lucky you went for an adjacent attack. Will you stop summoning guys? Can you just fight me like a man? Or a demon? Poor dodge again. Okay, phase two. I'm pretty certain I have no friends with me anymore. We are regening there. The ball you play now is just to hold the attack button. I, I really can't see what's going on. Maybe we should throw some bombs at this guy. Right, 
you dead yet? Can you please just perish? I have a lot of other things to do today. I, I, I'm not doing well until you're dodging for this guy. Oh my god, I, I just can't dodge the ag tag today. I keep setting my guessing myself to running through the tears. It doesn't matter. I have enough health to tank it. Right? Yeah, we have enough health. Give me the delirium portal though, right? I want to keep going. We didn't get it. Okay. Achieve unlocked horse pill. I'll take it. And that is another win. So of the four characters we played as, the, the new updated versions. The only one we didn't win as was Tainted Jacob, where I had the best Tainted Jacob run I've ever had, basically. But we got to Beast and died onto Beast, because I made one little misstep. But anyway, that's going to do it for these little updates. Sorry, let's say the little updates. The the showcase of the updates. There are some items I didn't unfortunately get to pick up, or at least pick up in a way that was productive, i.e. Tainted Cain destroyed it. The only other character, and I mentioned this at the start, Tainted Eden has been changed. Self-harm damage no longer rotates him. I'm not going to play a Tainted Eden run in the hope that I get a self-harm item. It's easy to imagine. I still think they're going to be a really bad character to play as. But anyway, I'm going to bring up now the uh, the patch notes and just discuss through some of the things. If you're not interested in that type of thing, then, you know what, go and enjoy your life. You have my permission to leave the video now. But if you want to see my opinions, then, you know, go ahead, carry on. Right, let me catch my Steam window. So there is some stuff immediately at the top. So the three new items, this glass eye, which I believe, and I, I accidentally saw all these, so I got a bit spoiled on them. So glass eye is a look plus damage up, I think, just like base. Sty is kind of interesting. This is the one item we did pick up. So this is a damage up, but it's only in the right eye. And then I think it's a range up and a rate of fire down or something. It's along those lines. But it's just stats, basically. But with the exception of this one, it shoots from your right eye now. And then Mum's Ring is a stat up, but I don't remember the stat. Let me check my little notes over here. It is a damage up, just a one damage up. And it drops one random rune when it's picked up. And it obviously counts towards the Mum transformation. I guess that was just to balance up the mum transformation with other transformations. That is my presumption. But yeah, Sty is 28% damage up right eye only, plus 7 range up right eye only, and minus 3 shot speed down, sorry. A point 0.3, sorry. Right eye only. And glass eye, point 0.7 damage up and 1 look up. They're fine. I, I, again, they're just raw stat ups. I haven't got a lot to say about them. All of them I think were damage upgrades, so I, I like that. Next, on to the post-it note thing. C-section is now functional and obtainable after being unlocked. Again, I've not completed my post-it note yet, as you may have noticed by me unlocking most of my post-it notes. I had heard of this item, C-section, which I think is from Tainted Lilith. And it was unobtainable, but there was like a post-it note thing on the, the item list to say you have to get it. So I believe the only way to get it was to get roll down die and roll down whatever the item is plus C-section. Now you can obtain it. That's obviously a great change because, you know, that means you can obtain every item in the game. Bag of Crafting Flip Sumptorium can now be found by all characters after being unlocked. Again, nice, we can put that on the post-it note. Added a birthright effect for all characters that were missing one. I didn't know this actually, that birthright didn't work for every single character. So now everyone's got an effect, so that's going to mean this item you have to learn for like every single character exactly what it does. Which I don't hate, as long as it's only this item, I'll live with that. Added a description to every tainted character that was missing one in the character selection menu. Didn't notice it. <laughs> Good. Added a new level transition versus screen graphics for Tainted Eden. Fine. Minimap icons for Tainted question marks poop pickups. Again, quality of life. Nice. I like it. Added unique starting room graphics for every character. I like it. You know, more uniqueness. More like variety in the run. Even if it's just a little bit of visual variety, it's going to do a lot. And speaking of more variety, 200 plus new room layouts. Excellent. This game will like keep surviving based on like the content that's added to it. I think Ed did mention that this might be like the last big patch, but like if every so often like they added some like rooms, it'd go a long way, honestly, to keeping the game a little bit fresh. 
But I'm sure the modern community will like do stuff to do that as well. Because that's my big plan from this, is to complete the post-it note on everyone, become the, the great god or whatever it's called, and then we'll look at some mods. Right, visual changes. Again, not too massive. Lost health is now visible in the hood. We've seen that when we're playing Tainted Jacob. Holy Mantle is now visible. Again, we've seen this. It's a nice little quality of life change. In case you don't see the flashing animation, there's now a little cross in the top corner that goes over your first health container. I approve. Updated sprites for Tainted Lazarus. I didn't notice. Nice. Uh, more sprites for The Thing, Null, Begotten, Evil Twin, Clot, Blue Boil, and Juki. I'm not really good at knowing what the names of characters are, <laughs> especially enemy characters. I have no idea, but I'm sure we'll notice them as we go along. Or maybe I won't. We did see the updated sprite for Converter again. This is a null change. Fine, it's different. Fix the visage attacks to consistent red colour scheme. Who is the visage? Are you one of the bosses in the... Hmm, let me just check this. I think you're one of the ones in the... I can't remember what the room's even called. Uh, it's on the alt path, I think. One of the bosses? Question mark? Yes, it's the one with the chain and the heart. You know what? Any quality of life change that makes things easier and more clear to see is going to be a good thing. So again, fine. Unique item costumes for Tainted Lilith's Fetus. Love it, I want to check it out. I did consider doing just a video on this, but again, it's probably not worth it. The juice isn't worth the squeeze right now. It's just a visual change. Uh, slightly tweak the colour of the womb to be easier on the eyes. Not going to lie, not noticed it. What I would have changed, though, is the uh, the corpse. That red floor, like the floor versus the void, is heinous. And it still is heinous. I'm surprised that wasn't changed. Especially since they changed the womb. But sure. I guess it's not as vibrant now, which I guess is easier on the eyes, as they say. Updated graphics for Blue Baby's only friend and big fan to be more consistent with Boonflies and other variants. I honestly prefer you not to have done that, just so that it's easy to tell who's an enemy and who's not. It's like the minorest little anal nerf about something. It's probably going to be harder to see things. Consistent, but harder to tell, so... Whatever. Techstone. Tech plus brimstone lasers now have a large and giant variant similar to brimstone lasers. Okay. That's interesting. We'll try and check that out at some point. Right, now some of the other things. So we've gone over most tainted Azazel changes. So I'm not going to go over them individually. Just watch the first point. I say point one. I think it was the point two video where we tainted Azazel. Basically, he now sneezes. He puts a debuff on someone and then he charges his brimstone laser faster. And the brimstone laser does more damage to people he sneezed on. Great. It has a different like attack style. It's very unique. So you're like, you tap and then hold down the button after the tap. It took me some getting used to it, and I don't think I've really got fully used to it yet. My opinion is that he's still good. I don't think he's as good as Azazel, but I don't think a lot of people are as good as Azazel, mainly because of just the flight, frankly. It is kind of interesting, and potentially he has like, an insane damage output. He might be a very good character to just, you know, complete the game without picking up any item. I never really messed about too much, because again, we picked up... What did we pick up? We picked up, like, Satanic Bible immediately and then just picked up Brimstone or something afterwards. Which kind of ruined the whole, you know, testing out the character. But I don't know how much that vulnerability puts onto them. It felt really strong. So my opinion is that, like, at the very least it was a sideways step for that character. I personally think it's a minor buff, but, again, really depends. I did play Tainted to the Zay so much before the buff came, or, sorry, the patch came out. So I don't really remember, I don't remember him being hard to really, like, beat the game as. But I think what the problem was before was I didn't even notice the sneeze existed for most of his runs. His little thing Brimstone was just good enough. The Brimstone, by the way, was cut in half like the time of it, so it implies that you should be using this strategy, which is nice. Anything that adds a little bit of skill element to the game is probably going to be a positive thing. Right, Tainted the Eve we've just played. So her clots, when she's at full health, drop to the floor instead of just being wasted. That is a fantastic quality of life change. I really like that. And to circumvent then the problem that, you know, you could just generate hundreds of clots, which we have done on countless runs. And even on this run, we generated pretty large swarms of them. They now decay in health down to 1 HP. I don't know if they were 15 HP before, or if they were, like, in the middle of these. And it's only 5 HP for non-red hearts that they decay to, so they'll take a hit. I think this is a positive change. I think it's probably a slight nerf to the character. 
just playing with it. But I, as I mentioned before, I like things that have a potential to swap roles. And in this character's case, if you pick up health, or like you have a health item, you can loosely translate that as a damage item, like a temporary damage up. And I think that's really neat. I really like Tainted Eve. I think, I think on the fun scale, they're pretty high. I think on the, the quality scale, and I'm going to have to think about this at some point. We'll probably do a tier list when I've not like knocked everything out on this. I'd say they're in a decent place. I think they're above the midway line. They're probably like, broadly speaking, if you're going to do like S, A, B, C. I'd say she's hovering in the A tier somewhere, but probably low down on the A tier or high in the B. But again, I'd have to take every character to like really work this out. But good, I like it. Next one, Tainted Lazarus. All items that spawn as part of the loom, room layout, such as treasure room or shop, now have an alternate form which can be accessed using flip, even after they've been picked up. Insane change. It's a huge buff for the character. They were abysmal. They were hateful to play as, they just weren't fun, and they weren't good. Which is a really bad mix. They were probably like bottom of the list in terms of, you know, quality. Between Tainted Lazarus, Tainted Jacob, and Tainted Eden, I think they were the three heinously bad characters. And I include Tainted Lost in that. I know that he is probably very hard, but he's fun. He has perks to him. Those three characters just didn't have a perk, in my opinion. Very minor ones, I guess, for Tainted Jacob, which is why I'd probably separate him from the other two. But he was very annoying to play as, and I still find him a little bit annoying. But we'll get to him later, because he has also been changed. I think this is a huge change. I think it's a fun change. The one thing I would question, I don't know if this is a bug right now, that if you don't flip in the room where the item is, because it flickers between like the two forms, and you walk out, you can't flip to pick up the other pedestal. Like I feel like that's a bug. I don't think it's intentional. Because it says even after they've been picked up. So... I think that's a bug, like, by experience, so we'll see if that's fixed or if it stays in the game like this for another five or ten months. But I think it's generally a, a positive improvement. I think Tainted Lazarus is still low down on the tier list, but I don't think they're the bottom tier anymore. Before I would have said they were an F tier character, I'd probably say now they're somewhere in the C tier. Like, around the average, maybe a little bit below average. Uh, Tainted Eden, no longer rerolls in self-inflicted damage. And no longer rerolls on fatal damage, which was a bit pointless because you still die. So self-inflicted damage includes blood donations and curse rooms. So you can go into the curse rooms. That's it. Honestly, I still think they're going to be a horrible character. I think they might be the worst character in the game now. They're very unfun to play because you can't really predict their runs because they just re-roll. It's just random. It's just randomness. There's no prediction, no designing. You just have to play good, I guess, is the thing. But you can always roll into a terrible run. My only solution at the moment to this character is to pick up as many items as possible. Because in my opinion, there are more good items than there are bad items. Like, run-losing items. And that's how we've done runs. But we'll not tend to be either now at some point. They were my least feared character. I think I would have rated them probably, like, third from bottom. But I, I just don't think I'm going to enjoy it. And I don't think there's a lot to do you could change that character. That wouldn't, like, overlap with just Eden. I did consider maybe, you know, there's a limit to it or something, like, you can only re-roll a certain number of times per floor. I don't know. Or maybe a mechanic on Tainted Eden where you could roll back a run or something on a room charge. A bit like flip. So if you get a really good run and, like, you flip out, you can re-roll back again, but then you have to pick up, like, I don't know, 12 rooms of charge or something. That could have been really interesting, but I don't know. I'll leave Tainted Eden there. I, I think the change is basically a sidestep. It's a quality of life thing. I guess it's a minor buff, but I still think they're dropping down the tier list. Okay, updating Tainted Kane's recipe system to allow golden pennies, golden pills, golden batteries, and boot pickups. Fine. More options, more good. Tainted Kane's crafting system are now slightly more consistent. Higher quality pickups are more likely to yield higher quality items. Good. Uh, and now, most of the crafting recipes are generated based on the seed of the current run, aside from a few fixed recipes. This is the biggest nerf that's ever been, I think, in Isaac. But it's because the item itself, or the character, I guess, itself, was so monumentally busted that they were close to unlosable. The, the, for the most part, I think if I did, like, a thousand runs as every single character, I'd probably, at the very best, like, win 900 of them. Because you always have a stupid run at the beginning where you're down the first floor, or at least I do. Better players maybe, like, will take an Azazel run and win, you know, 
950 plus of those runs. Probably even higher, actually. They're probably the best players would be doing a thousand, like with Azazel. I think Tainted Cain, for like even like a pretty rookie player, would have done 995 or something out of the thousand. They were so monumentally busted. As long as you made, you know, Rock Bottom, Red Stew, or I used to make Red Stew, then Rock Bottom, then Red Stew again, you were set, because you would then have 20 damage and you would just melt anything early on in the game. And you could build the run you wanted to. I'm a little bit sad that it's gone because I did want to like theorycraft some runs, build it with Tainted Cain and run them out. I guess I should have done them early on, but I would say this character was on the strength scale insanely high. They were like S plus tier. They were the best character, hands down. And it was by tiers. Realistically, like, I don't know. I don't know who the second best character is, but just off the top of my head, stuff like, I mean, Isaac is good. Tainted Isaac is pretty good as well. They'd have been up there. But compared to, like, Tainted Kane, Tainted Kane would have been S tier. They would have been, like, B tier. If you were, like, you know, normalizing for the, like, the differences in class. They were so strong. I think it's fair that they've been changed. Does this improve their funness now? Because I would have said they were lower on the fun scale. Because it wasn't really fun just to build the same run over and over again and just stomp the game. That's not really what, you know, you want to do. My problem still is that it takes so long to craft recipes that it's kind of annoying to do stuff like boss rush. And now that you can't really make, you know, predefined recipes, you sort of like go into the realm of Tainted Eden where you're not really designing runs. But I think it was difficult. I think this is a good change. Overall, the nerf was fair. I think it's a good change. I think the character is now pretty weak. I think they're in the, the bottom half tier of characters. And I don't think they're particularly fun. But that's, I guess, another story. Some people might like this. But I don't think I'm one of them. Right. Tainted Forgotten is now thrown by releasing the attack button. It picked up while charging an attack. Honestly, I didn't even notice Tainted Forgotten had a change. But this seems pretty minor. Nice quality of life. We'll take it. Uh, bag of crafting now yields a random item instead of breakfast that when its result would normally be an item that hasn't been unlocked yet. Sure. Bag of crafting can purchase pickups on sale in shop. Okay. Bag of crafting can now purchase pickups on sale in shop. Hmm. That's something I might look into. I didn't notice this one or like the semantics of it. That might mean if it's on sale you can put it into the bag. Because I thought I accidentally bagged an item in the shop and then tried to another shop item and it looked very glitchy. So, I don't know. Maybe there is a little change that I didn't notice. It would have been nice if this was up, you know, with Tainted Cane, but whatever. Right. Tainted Alert's Fetus now automatically aims at nearby enemies. Again, this is a quality of life thing. It will make the shots, because I presume that's what it means automatically aims, it's the shots that the Fetus makes. It will make the Fetus shooting better, but the character was busted because of the whip, frankly, so... It's a buff, but I think it's pretty minor. Tainted Jacob can now pick up health when in ghost form. I think this is a huge change. I say huge. It's not monumentally huge, but it's pretty big. There were so many runs I had as Tainted Jacob where I become the lost, and you'd get like an early room item and then it's a health up and you just lose it, basically. You get nothing for it. I'd pick it up so that I might re-roll it, but you basically got nothing. That's a great change. Uh, you get more invisible frames after being hit by Dark Esau. Again, I like the change. You don't want to just get smacked around in the corner. And later on you'll see that Holy Mantle has been buffed as well for the invincibility frames. After it was nerfed, so... I, I can't remember if that's back to where it used to be. Because it went down to 0.5 seconds and it's now at 1 second. I don't know what it is for Esau. I presume it's around the 1 second mark. I, I think it's a good change. It felt cheap sometimes when you died. Uh, he no longer turns to the ghost form if hit by Dark Esau while invulnerable. This is the biggest change to this character in my opinion. I was so cheesed off, and I, I've said this so many times, whining and bitching about the character, that it made no sense to me that when they were hit while invulnerable, that it should count as a hit. Because that's what invulnerability does. It blocks hits. I'm so, like, annoyed I'm spitting on my keyboard right now. Spitting feathers. But yeah, uh, that's not even what that means. I was so annoyed with it that I just thought it was stupid. Why should Dark Esau, like, break the mechanic of the game? It just didn't make sense. So I think this is a great change. It also gives hope to people that hate the character. And I don't really like the character. Even with the run that I did recently where it did feel a lot better to play as. The, the possibility of getting Sigil of Baphomet or Book of Shadows. 
and just blocking when you're going to be get hit by that guy, or getting like Car Battery, Book of Shadows, or you know, Blank Rune, not Blank Rune, Clear Rune plus Algis. It gives you hope. <laughs> That's what I'd say about this character. It gives you hope to win runs, or, or at least to break the game in some way. The only thing I'm not sure about invulnerability, by the way, will that work on Nord Leaf? Because I don't think it did before. But we'll see. When we get Nord Leaf eventually. Right, Dark Esau is now invulnerable and no longer blocks tears of bombs, but blocks enemy projectiles instead. That's a big change. So, I don't know. So, before what you would do is you get hit by Dark Esau and then spend three minutes shooting Dark Esau. So it'd explode because then he wouldn't chase you around anymore. You can't do that anymore because you can't shoot him. You can't bomb him instead, so you basically can't damage him. I don't know if the enemies can kill him. If the enemies can kill him and it gets the same effect, then that could be a bit annoying. But I didn't experience it, so I think it's overall a positive change. It's kind of annoying that you can't force yourself to be turned into the Lost and get rid of him at the same time. But equally, you can just run into him and become the Lost and steal an item. So that's the benefit of Tainted Jacob. You can become the Lost and steal a Devil Deal item. Just a worse version of the Lost. But you'll now be chased by him, so I think that's an okay change. He always charges towards the player now, instead of being locked in eight directions. This is actually huge, and it's bigger than I thought it was when I was playing with the character. It did feel considerably easier to dodge his attacks. I honestly didn't notice that he charged along axes, you know, like up, down, left, right, on the diagonals. But just playing him on that one run, you could just circle around the room and he would just never get you. He also seemed to be a bit less aggressive, like there was times where I just stood next to him and he was just like sat there going like, Hey fam, what's up? And you know, nothing was happening. Which is nice, I guess. The less he charges at you, the less likely you are to come aloft, the less likely you are to lose a run. So I think this is actually pretty big. I think it's easy to dodge the character now. A good change. Also, it means that in rooms where there's only like, like a one wide bridge, for example, you can kind of bait him slightly off center and make him charge across and you just step to the other side of that one like wide bridge and you're not guaranteed to be hit by him. I still think the character's garbage because of that because I think there are going to be situations where you get hit and there's nothing you can do about it. Maybe they do a change like they mentioned somewhere else where, and it's going to be later on, that Blood Puppy when he's in his aggro form will not attack you if you cannot move. Maybe it does something like that but I don't know. I don't know how they'd code that. The only other thing I can think of is any one tile wide rooms with no space to move. And I'm thinking specifically of the one where his bomb flies flying across it. That he just never shows up in his rotation because I think it's just so annoying. And a bit unfair. Dark E sound now attempts to keep a minimum distance from the player when not charging. So that he behaves like Dark Mom. Which is good. Again, he's less aggressive. You're less likely to get hit. You're more likely to say his uh, Jacob. You're more likely to have a fun run. His charge now ignores boss armor. I don't know. I didn't experience a, a significant quality, but I didn't really fight any bosses with huge boss armor like Hush. I'd like to try and take him to Hush and just see what he does, but for now I'm going to keep that point mute. It has to be a buff, but I don't know if it's a huge one. Using Anima Soul in a room with no enemies to Tainted Jacob now immediately summons Dark Esau. Careful not to do that, because that could be frustrating. I don't really know why they've done this, actually. It seems like a, a weird change, in my opinion, but... Hey ho. Updated the list of items tainted, lost, birthright, lost, confined. Fixes being able to find your cut and not being able to find holy water. Again, great for the tainted, lost. Nice. Birthright, lost, confined. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I, I think this is like a sideways change. It just looks like it's things that were. Stupid. So I'm going to say minor, minor buff, but basically nothing. Donation machines now explode on being bombed. Most donation progress is retained, but the machines do not reappear for the remainder of the run. This is huge, actually. It's a big nerf to shops again. Was it necessary? I don't know. I know they were trying to stop infinite runs. I, I believe a, one, a way of doing it was using, like, you know, shop mechanics of getting money, buying restock stuff. And it was still prevalent in the game. It, it's to stop people going infinite. It's a huge nerf, I guess, to items like restock, as I said, where you can't necessarily get loads of money. Just buy a bunch of shop items and, you know, win a run. We did one recently, in fact, where I do an episode called, like, the most expensive run in Isaac history. 
where I bombed my donation machine, I think, for like 200 coins or something, just to guarantee a victory. It's a pity you can't do something like that anymore, but I guess it, it's to stop going infinite. So I'm going to tentatively say this is a good change, but I actually think it's kind of... Kind of meh. I think every once in a while, if you get a run where you go infinite, I think you should just be allowed to enjoy the run. It's whether or not it's, you know, too easy to go infinite is the issue. And it feels kind of garbage that there are some characters that literally have a one item go infinite ability. You know, like Tainted Bethany. And then you're like, you know, you're nerfing... You blowing up the donation machine, which affects your future runs. And I like the ability to, you know, really hit the donation machine hard up, you know, put a lot of money into it, and affect runs in the future. But, you know, I'll just live with it. <laughs> Restock machines can now uncommonly appear in shops, for real this time. Yes, they do. Have I used one? No. I think this is nothing. This is basically nothing change. You really want to just buy shop items. I don't think you ever want to reroll shop items unless you're absolutely desperate. Or you're filthy rich. They are the only scenarios that you'll probably do this in. And I've never once considered doing it. I guess if you had lots of bombs as well, you might bomb one once just for a lark. I guess it's okay. I think overall, though, the com combination means that shop worse. That is a nerf to shops overall. But this is nice. That's bad. But, you know, we'll live with it. Rocket in the jar now aims purely based on the player's aim direction. Normal bombs are placed if the player is not attacking. This is a good change. Rocket in a jar was frustrating to use and I would never pick it up because I'm more likely to hit myself than hit an enemy. Will I pick it up after this change? No, because I still think I'm more likely to hit myself. It's a buff, but I think it's probably a bad item still. Piercing Dr. Fetus bombs now inflict contact damage when passing through enemies. Nice buff. Not a lot to say about that. It's a nice buff. Is it a good buff? No. It's a buff. Who cares? Dr. Fetus plus Rocket in a Jar plus Polyphemus now fires piercing rockets that can explode twice. I love the idea of it. Will I ever pick up Rocket in a Jar to try and test this out? Probably never. But if I remember that I have Dr. Fetus plus Polyphemus and I see Rocket in a Jar, I'll take a lark. But I'm never going to pick up Rocket in a Jar to try and get this synergy, so... Any more interesting synergies are fun. You might re-roll into something like this and, you know, have a wacky run. I, I like these things. So, I'm going to say positive. Mum's Knife now synergizes with Technology and Tech X. Similar to Forgotten's Throwbone. Sure, nice. Again, everything that says, you know, this is now a synergy is going to be a positive for me. Unless the synergy is garbage. But I don't know that from the post-it note. The post-it note. The update notes. Trisagian shots now trigger on hit effects only when touching enemies or obstacles. That sounds like a bug fix. We'll take it. The being the most fart sources now push enemies, bombs, and pickups. Negligible. I guess buff, but it's nothing. Still garbage. Reduce the volume of farts from Jupiter. I don't remember this being a problem, but again, it's probably a positive just not to be blasting people around at random, so... Nice. Picking up items generated by Satanic Bible now counts as taking a devil deal. Disabling future angel rooms. That's a nerf to Satanic Bible, I guess, but not a huge one. It's Again, it's like a minor one. If you see Satanic Bible and you were going for, you know, to beat Mega Satan, it's now probably not an item you want to take. If you're just trying to win a run, though, you probably want to take Satanic Bible because it's still really good. Arguably better than it was before, because, you know, they're like, oh, we're going to make your item room item, oh, sorry, your boss room item, a devil deal item, so, you know, you have to spend HP but you're gaining HP from Satanic Bible. Forgetting that Devil Deals are pretty much always better than boss items, I know there are exceptions. So it's not really a huge downside, especially if you can get something like Car Battery, which doubles the effect of it, or you get the battery or something, where you get more batteries to, or like double the charge to use on it, or like 4.5 volts. I still think Satanic Bible's great. I think this change is fine. It makes some degree of sense. Yeah, that's all I can say about it. It makes sense. Possibly mine them nerf, but who cares. Devil deals costing one heart and two soul hearts can now be taken if the player only has one heart container and no soul hearts. That's a buff to devil deals. Hey! The devil deals which, you know, you spent health on, who used to have the best pool compared to the angel room deals, I think are now worse than angel room deals for the most part. 
So it's kind of worth going for angel rooms. The only downside to that way is you're probably on average going to get one less, you know, deal. But so often you get like a garbage devil deal and you're just like, oh, it's like I did all this for you now. Like, bloody gust. It's like, I, I don't really care. So the, the ability to steal devil deals to, or like, you know, discount it by some way is a positive in my opinion. Although, how would this work out? If you have one heart container and no soul hearts, so how does this do not kill you? Oh, I guess the scenario is that it does kill you, but you would pick up something like, I, I don't know what's on for one heart and two soul hearts, but anything that would give you health back, you can now take it. Mine the buff to the devil deals, pretty negligible. I'll try to remember this, but apologies if I forget. Devil deals can now be taken for free when under the lost curse, obtaining by touching a white fire or using soul of the lost. However, this will cause other personal items in the room to disappear. I honestly thought that was a thing already. <laughs> so sure. Nice. Quality of life change makes sense. Anything that, you know, just makes sense is a good thing. Nothing conflicting one another. This just feels right. Glass cannon no longer breaks from self-inflicting damage. That's another minor buff to glass cannon. It's pretty minor, but again, quality of life. Increase invisible frames from Holy Mantle from 1 second to 0.5. Again, this is nice. You don't get just double hit when Holy Mantle breaks and like someone's ran into you. It gives you time to get away from them again. I don't know what Holy Mantle used to be before. I thought it was 1 second, but this might just be a return to the norm for Holy Mantle, which makes Holy Mantle better. It is a buff. IBS now behaves like charge attacks similar to Kidney Stone, but does not prevent the player from attacking when fully charged. I have to admit, I've never had IBS, so I can't comment on this item. So, that's where I'm going to be. Golden Troll Bombs now explode less often when coming into contact with the Beast. This sounds more like a bug fix. <laughs> I had heard that there were funny ways to kill the Beast with Golden Troll Bombs that they just basically keep hitting him and just blowing up over and his health, you know, would just disappear pretty quickly. You know, like a battery on an advert for, you know, Joracell or something, like a competitor battery. That's what his health looked like. It's pretty minor. But I guess a nerf to Golden Troll Bombs if anyone was playing around with them. Notch Axe now consumes a Soul Charge per swing as Bethany after running out of durability. So I guess every time he swung, it used to count as one Soul Charge. And now you have to go through the entire, you know, duration. Nice. It's a buff. Notch that. It's pretty garbage still, but nice. It now creates bridges when breaking rocks next to pits. That's a pretty more substantial buff to Notch that, frankly. It is like a really shit version of the ladder, but you have the ability to open up tinted rocks. It's something you might take, Notch Axe, but, you know, as soon as you see something semi-decent, you're going to get rid of it. It's probably like seed slash D tier active item. M now rerolls Notch Axe when it runs out of durability. So M is the trinket that just rerolls your active item every time you use it. So I guess, again, you used to use it once and it would just reroll it. Now you have to wait for the durability. Big thumb up to Notch Axe. It's actually arguably a nerf, <laughs> but it's so minor I just don't care because, frankly, I think Notch Axe is in the bottom 50% of active items. So it's probably better to re-roll the active item, frankly. So you'd probably want it to go immediately. That being said, you could just use all the durability for nothing, I guess. And you'd be fine. So sure. It's negligible. Increase the price of higher tier items in Angel Shops from 15 to 30. This is a nerf to the item whose name I've forgotten, and I will check it up now. It's the ladder thing. Stairway to Heaven? It's just called Stairway. That's fine. Stairway was a very good item. I liked it. Angel Rooms are pretty good. Just full stop. Do I think it's fair to nerf that? Probably. Kind of excessive to double the price, frankly, but we'll have to play around with it. It's, it's a nerf to the item. Reduce the price of Little Brimstone and Little Abaddon to one heart. Fair. They were pretty garbage, and I think they were two heart things. I mean, it's a pretty good change for Little Brim. Brim's pretty good early on. Little Abaddon, I'm not impressed by. So, buff. Is it worth taking Little Abaddon? Probably not. Is it worth taking Little Brimstone at one heart? Probably. Devil Rooms are now more likely to have items for sale. Great. The most... Soul destroying thing is you fight for a devil deal, you might not get it on your second floor, you get it on the third floor, you go in there and it's like five pills. And you're just like, oh, fuck me, I guess. 
Less of those rooms is probably better. Cap the prop rate of ghost pepper and bird's eye to 50%. Holding both removes the cap. Sure. Ghost pepper is insane. It's half as insane. The overall result is the item is still insane. Removed a redundant range increase granted by Sacred Heart and Godhead. This was originally needed to counteract the shot speed decrease. Sure. You know what? We might have actually seen that in that last run. I did notice my range was pretty low. So, it's a nerf, but is Sacred Heart still good? Yes. Converter now to three room cooldown. Oh, the nerf converter. So converter used to just be able to use at will. Now you can't. There were ways to go infinite with converter, so I think this is fair. I guess it was to nerf that one item loop, as I mentioned before. The Hermit question mark now converts sacks into seven pennies. I don't know what the card normally does because I've never unlocked it, so I'm going to ignore that one. Treasure rooms can now be encountered in the scene double challenge. I've done it, I don't care. Mama Mega now has a more intuitive interaction with Golden Bombs. Using it will now consume a Golden Bomb if a player has one, allowing it to be used again. The most minor of minor changes, but again, it's quality of life, it's an intuitive thing as they mentioned, that's fine. Suplex now scales in damage with the area effect with the player's size. Oh sorry, and the area effect. I love it. Fantastic change. Anything that plays around like a kind of niche mechanic, I love. Playing around with the player size as a mechanic is fantastic. I love this change. It's fantastic. Thumbs up from Andalono. Uh, Blood Puppy will no longer try to attack the player when he can't move. Sure. Mirrors can no longer be broken by tear effects such as Sulfuric Acid and Terror. Again, quality of life change, but don't shoot them in the first place. Anima Solar. Okay, a buff all the way down here. Why? It can now chain up to two targets the player has car battery. If only one valid target is present, it will be chained for twice the duration. Excellent, I like it. Challenge trophies and giant chests now spawn with a pickup cooldown to prevent accidentally ending a run. Sure, that, that's actually pretty good. Pop tears will now start falling to the ground after bouncing off each other eight times. I don't know what it was before. <laughs> this is fine, I guess. Uh, Lemegaton, or however it's meant to be pronounced, now spawns item with from randomized pools, treasure, boss, and shot pool, with a 25% chance to pick the same pool as the current room. I don't know how to feel about this one. So Lemegaton generates a random item, but as a wisp. So it's now on a randomized pool but with a tolerance towards a certain one. I guess this is again the nerf to going infinite with converter, I think it was. So that you could just generate an infinite amount of items, or like, sorry, item wisps. And you could go specifically to a certain pool to get the ones you wanted, like you could go to the secret room pool. You can go to a devil deal or something. Sure. Rebalance the cooldown of blank card, placebo and clear room with certain effects. I don't know without actual specifics on this, but Rebalance makes me think that they've buffed them. There's probably certain card effects which were too expensive and they've maybe removed like two charges off it. It's probably a good change. Bombs can now be suplex. The more things I can suplex, the better. That's a buff. Little Baggy no longer affects pocket items that are neither pills nor cards, such as runes. That's how I feel about this change. Sure. This is fine. Little Baggy doesn't affect runes. Is it worth picking up Little Baggy? Probably not. Heartbreak can no longer kill the player on a pickup. Well, that's always nice. I, I don't really remember what this item does. I think it gives you, like, like the broken heart containers. So I guess it stops you from getting a broken heart container just instantly killing you. Nice. Reviving after dying having 100% broken hearts now removes one broken heart to prevent situations where the player would still be alive despite having no health. That sounds like something that was broken. It is no longer broken. That is a positive change. Dark Arts now only grants temporary damage buff to Dark Judas and Tainted Judas. So this is a nerf to Dark Arts. Because you could pick it up as other characters. Like you could unlock it and use it as them. And I guess the, the temporary damage buff was too strong for them. It seems stupid. I don't know why you'd nerf it. I guess like again top tier players maybe. Of like abusing the invulnerability you get off it so much that. You know. 
it's too good. In my opinion, as like a casual player, I didn't think this was a great item. I think it was good. It was entertaining. I, I don't think this was necessary, but pay her. Damage buff granted by Dark Arts now decays faster the, the higher it is, but no longer decays while Dark Arts is still active. Again, this feels like a nerf to Dark Arts. I guess this is to nerf you going into bullet hell bosses like the Hush and getting like a plus 30 damage up by just going through every single tier. In which case, I don't know why you'd increase the decay because that's going to make it worse early on when like there aren't bullet hell bosses. Why not just cap it? It can only give you like a plus 10 damage up or something. That feels more sensible than, you know, it just decaying incredibly quickly potentially. I don't know. I, I think this is overall a nerf to Dark Arts. And I didn't think it was ever an S tier item, so it seems insane. But it is what it is. Binge Eater now gives you a, a minus 0 0.003 speed up per food item held. What a big change! Minus 0 0.03 speed per food item. It is on the scale of money equals power, but you're never going to pick up as much money as, you know, food items. This is a nerf of the minorest proportions. Binge Eater Plus Breakfast now increases range and shot speed, instead of range and speed. <laughs> Again, sideways step. Binge Eater Plus Dessert now increases damage and shot speed instead of damage and speed. I mean, both of them are minor buffs in my opinion, but negligible. It really depends what your speed is to begin with. Like, shot speed is pretty negligible as a stat in my opinion. Speed is important only if you don't have any. That's about it. Reduce the size of the Lost Souls hit sphere. That's a buff. You're going to take less damage, I guess? Or less likely to take damage? You can dodge a bit easier. Nice. Sigil Baphomet no longer triggers from stalagmites being destroyed in the beast fight. Negligible nerf. I didn't even know it was the case. Expansion Pack can no longer trigger Metronome or D Infinity. Sure. That was the the trinket that gives you a random effect upon using your active item. I'm sure there's a way this can break the game. Metronome can no longer trigger clicker or arc key. You piece. I spent an episode trying to make Metronome pop one of these and not doing it. Why remove that insanity from the game? <laughs> it, it's a nerf to Metronome, frankly. I say nerf. If you get arc it's, it's a monumental role. If you get clicker, then you're probably going to be annoyed. So, in one way, it removes frustration, but it does remove the way to high roll. Metronome now has a reduced chance to trigger Genesis and Death Certificate. Why would you remove Arky, but keep Genesis? Riddle me this. It seems insane, and it seems more frustrating than the clicker, frankly. Like, if you're on an insane run, and you're like, I don't know, for some reason you're using Metronome and you're on the chest, and you trigger Genesis, you're fucked. You could have a worse run than you had before, probably. I don't know. I don't get it. And a resistant, who cares? Fully charged Azazel Rage now fires while clearing a challenge room or greed mode wave. Sure. I don't know what this change is. Now fires when... I guess it just... It counts as like a completion and it'll just fire your laser off so you can't just hold it. That sounds like an annoyance. But whatever. Updated boom flies and other variants to use stage HP. This results in them having less HP before the caves and more HP afterwards. Okay. That's an interesting change. That is a quality of life change to the game to make it a little bit easier. Have I noticed this? No. But... The game was probably on the slightly harder side. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to maybe say a hot take here. I think Repentance made the game easier. I think the pathways to beat Mother and the Beast are harder than any of the other pathways. But I think overall to get a victory is easier in Repentance than it was in Afterbirth Plus. Mainly because they've removed Void Portals from like the entire run. Having enemies to be a bit easier is going to make pathways potentially going towards the Beast and Mother easier great. I don't think this was a really necessary change, but sure. I don't hate it. Rebalance the quality value of several items. Okay. So this is probably for the 
the sack thing. Tinky King sacked. I can't really comment on that one. It's probably a good thing. Rebalance the various wisps from Book of Virtues. Again, I can't really comment on that one. It's probably... It's probably buffs and nerfs across the board, so... I don't know how that one will play out. Updated Singe's boss room layout to have rest, less rocks. Nice. He's an annoying boss. Hard to dodge. Easy to dodge now. Improvement. Champion bosses that spawn a copy of themselves now spawn with a fixed offset. This should prevent unavoidable damage upon ending a room. Great. We don't like bullshit, so this is a good change. Pink, admittedly this hasn't happened to me, I think. Maybe it's happened to me once in like 100 and, well, it's practically 200 runs now. So, again, is it a big change? Not unless it's one of those runs where you might be playing as Tainted Lost and, you know, you lose a hit to that, in which case you'll be fuming. So, thumbs up. Pink Champion Cajun is now smaller for consistency with other duplicating champion bosses. I like consistency. I like the change. Hush's Sky Laser is now affected by the timescale modifiers, i.e. Hourglass. Minor buff to Hourglass. Again, don't care. Momo Mega can now use the Broken Shovel to fall down in Basement 1. Again, this is a consistency thing for me. I like it. It's a bomb. It's a bomb effect. It should make the, the Shovel fall down. How often do I have Mama Mega on the first floor? Maybe one in every 6,000 runs. But sure, I can now get the Broken Shovel if I ever want to again. Twisted Pear can now interact correctly with Friendship Necklace. Good. Monster Manuel can... Uh, Monster Manuel. I always call it Monster Manuel. Monster Manuel can now grant Twisted Pear. I, I don't really know how good Twisted Pear is. I'm going to say buff. Sacrificial Altar can now grant Vengeful Spirit, Hungry Soul, and Blood Puppy. It's fine. Do I rate any of these items particularly highly? No. Probably a nerf to Sacrificial Altar, frankly. Q Baby can now be... But for consistency reasons, I don't hate this. Q Baby can now be picked up and thrown using Mum's Bracelet. I don't know the item, I'm going to ignore it. Sci-Fi now enters a brief cooldown period after reflecting a certain number of projectiles. It's still really good, don't worry. I have not seen Sci-Fi yet since the update. My feeling on the brackets, it's still really good, don't worry. Makes me think that they've nerfed it pretty hard. It's definitely a nerf, but it needed nerfing. It was, you know, it was Neo in the Matrix. That's how good Sci-Fi was. It's like, you tell me I can dodge bullets? It's like, no, when you're ready, you don't have to. That's what Sci-Fi did. I, you didn't have to dodge anymore. Sad to see it go, but I like to watch it walk away. Uh, Guppy's Eye now displays the contents of shopkeepers. Nice. Pulsing Red Champions now only heal enemies that are on the same team as them. Permacharmed enemies will only heal other permacharmed enemies. I guess this is nice. Pretty negligible, but it's a nerf to enemies again. Morning Stars can now sometimes spawn with an alternate facial expression. No one cares. <laughs> I'm only joking. It, again, visual changes that can be nice to the player to keep the game fresh. I, I, I don't mind this change. It's, it's negligible, though. The Mausoleum can now be entered for free when under the Lost Curse. That's interesting. That is a buff to Tainted Jacob, frankly, because then you can become the Lost pretty easily as him. And there's probably other ways to become the Lost temporarily. That's that's nice. A very niche interaction. Bad Trip and Health Down can no longer be obtained from pills when under the Lost Curse. Good. We don't like dying to bullshit. And pills that already have a bad enough time as it is. Golden Hearts can now only break from taking damage or when the player no longer has enough hearts to fill all of them. Sure. The quality of life, basically. Heart containers overflow is now tracked for the purpose of full rerolls. This prevents unfair loss of heart containers when rerolling HP up items away, especially with the keeper. Okay. That's interesting. Again, I'm not fully clear on how the reroll mechanic works anymore since they went to repentance. But it was frustrating when you're playing as like Tainted Eden, you might have like, you know, nine health containers, and suddenly, you know, you re-roll and you have one. Anything that stops that or like reduces the amount of health loss, I think is a good thing. This is a buff to re-rolling. Re-rolling is definitely not as strong as it used to be, but it used to be incredibly strong, so. Pull back to the medium again, I like it. 2020 no longer adds an extra shot when combined with the inner eye or mutant spider. 
Instead, cancels out the fire rate decrease they grant. Extra copies of 2020 add one extra shot per copy. A nerf, I guess, at 2020. Fair enough. Mega Mush now grants more invincible frames after its effect expires. This sounds like a quality of life thing because I've had Mega Mush once and it was insane. I guess it was just to stop, you know, just transforming back out and dying instantaneously. Fine. Spirit Shackles now grants more invincible frames after revival. I've never used it. I can't comment. But again, there seems to be a consistent thing that more invincible frames is good so you don't get chained double hit by an enemy. The random item effect granted by modern clay is now seeded per room. I've never picked up modern clay, I can't comment. Abaddon can no longer kill the player if they have Alabaster Box. Never considered it. Good. Spelunker Hat and Host Hat now block projectiles falling from above. Excellent change. I like the lore of the item, thematically makes sense. Thumbs up from Andalono. Spelunker Hat now reveals rooms up to two rooms away. A buff, but a minor one. But sure. Increase the aura damage of Godhead tears from 1.05 to 2. Good change. Godhead rarely comes up and I'm not that impressed by the item. It's good, don't get me wrong. It's not amazing. It's not like, oh my god, this is insane. Now, it's probably close to, oh my god, it's insane again. Hemolacria, or Hemolacrima as I call it, plus Dr. Fika's tears now split into a more visually satisfying way. Nice. Viz no longer has the random chance to turn into double Viz, except in utero. Honestly, I've read the sentence multiple times, don't understand it. I don't know what Viz is. <laughs> what is Viz? Is it an item? Have I just not unlocked it? Friend finder. Is it a trinket? I, I, I honestly don't know what this is. I don't know what Viz is. Huh? Rhymes. So I'm not going to comment on it. Good, I guess. Boomflies no longer have a random chance to turn into red bloomflies until caves one. Again. I personally prefer red boomflies than boomflies. So I think that makes the game very slightly harder, but it's, you know. It's just shuffling deck chairs on the, the deck chairs on the Titanic at this point. Doppels no longer have the chance to turn into evil twins. I don't know what this means again, because I don't know what Doppels is. <laughs> Dr. Thetis plus Monster It's Lungy now fires a more random looking barrage of bombs with a shorter fuse time. Sure. Makes sense. Consistency. Super secret rooms with hearts now more consistently for specific heart types when spawning hearts using card slash items. A buff to super secret rooms. It's going to matter one in every 10,000 runs. Ultra secret rooms now have an... I didn't know there's an ultra secret room. Now an item pool unique to them instead of using the angel room pool. Oh, is this the red room ones? Okay. If that's the case, I think this is a good change. It's a shame because I've had some really fun art... Arky. Red key runs. But we'd have to look at the ultra secret room pool to be very like certain what the change is. I imagine the items are still insane. But I don't know. You'll have to do a bit of research into this to see if this is a nerf or not. My guess is since Angel Room Pool is pretty good, that this is probably gonna be a nerf. Replace the mitre with hallowed ground in the greed mode Angel Room Pool. Well, that's a bit of a nerf to the Angel Room Pool, specifically in Greed Mode. Hallowed Ground, I don't really like as an item. The Mitre has the potential to be insane. Mitre plus like D20, really good in Greed Mode. I presume they mean Greed and Greedy, by the way, when they just say Greed Mode. That's my assumption. Why would you make Greedy Mode hard to, to beat? I don't know. It's so imbalanced, in my opinion, in the favor of losing runs. In Greedy, this is. Greed, not too bad. Greedy at heinous at times, especially for certain characters. I honestly would have made changes to him, like increase the chance of beating greedy mode runs, but I don't know. It's fine. Updated the greed mode secret room and curse room pools to have actual items instead of only Cuba meat. I guess that is a buff. We've traded the mitre for items in secret rooms on greed mode. Hurrah! Now, if only we could get bombs easier. <laughs> Tammy's head can now be found in the treasure room pool. I like the item, I like the change. Pyromaniac now has a normal weight rarity. Good. Pyromaniac, niche item, but can be fun. Glyph of Balance no longer causes soul hearts to drop when playing as the Lost. Hurrah. Removes pointlessness. 
Quality of life change, I'll take it. Rebound payout chances from Sanguine Bond. Stepping on spikes now counts as intentional self damage. No damage penalties. I don't know if I've ever seen Sanguine Bond. It's not coming to my mind. Let me just search for it. I spelt it Sanguine. Brilliant. Oh, I have seen this. It's the spike thing. Spawns a special set of spikes in Devil Room. Taking damage from the spikes is a chance to spawn a reward. Right, I get it. It's kind of like... It, it, it's kind of like the uh, sack rooms. I think this is a good change. It should count to self-harm damage. It makes sense. Quality of life, good. Stars question mark no longer attempts to remove starting items. I don't know what it does. That scares me, though. Curse of the Tower no longer triggers on damage taken from blood donation machines and devil beggars. But still triggers on other forms of intentional damage, such as IV bag. I don't like the change. I've mentioned throughout this, uh, you know, update notes, I like consistency. I think if you're going to have Curse of the Tower work on self-damage, then beggars and blood donation machines are a form of self-damage. I mean, you get IV bag from blood donation machines. I think this is a stupid change. I, I honestly would have reverted this instantaneously. I, I'm not happy with this, but it's just something you're going to have to remember. Does this mean I'm ever going to pick up Curse of the Tower? No. Unless I'm memeing. I guess now Pyromanic is the normal weight rarity. Maybe Pyromanic plus Curse of the Tower is going to be viable. Anyway, Curse of the Lost can no longer be countered in the Red Redemption Challenge. Excellent. That's the challenge I think I've still got to do, by the way. It's the one challenge I've got left, if I remember rightly. Losing air flight now temporarily grants the Bible effect for the current room if the lack of flight would cause the player to be stuck otherwise. Positive change, and I've actually seen this happen before and wondered how I got flight. And it's because I was over the void or something, and it's given me the Bible for that room. There's probably niche circumstances where that's actually beneficial. I'm thinking mainly as Tainted Lazarus of flipping between a character that, you know, has flight to one that doesn't have flight over a void, and then flying to another part of the map that's only accessible by flight, and picking up a card or something and using it. I'm pro not getting stuck around the map, though. Tainted Lazarus now respawns as himself and revived by Lazarus Rags. I'll just go through all these together. Tainted Blue Baby now responds as himself when using the Ankh or Broken Ankh. And Tainted Judas now responds as himself when revived by Judas the Shadow. All make sense. Consistency and I like it. Ipecac, Hemo, Lacria and Monstrous Lung Tears now have a less extreme arc when fighting a crawl space or in the beast fight. That's huge. I'm going to go to bed for Ipecac. I still think it's an S tier item. I've lost so many runs though with Ipecac. Mainly when it's combined with another effect, but I had noticed that on the beast fight when I've had Ipecac, it's so hard to aim that I think it's fair to have a less extreme arc. That's a good change. And now finally, Dad's note can no longer be rerolled by four pit dice rooms and spin down dice. Again, quality of life good. It should be treated like the the key for the Mega Satan fight. I could go through all the bug fixes. Well, this video is long enough as it is. Oh, what a cute little figure. I think that is my opinion on the update for each thing. I think overall, mainly positive changes. And I hope they keep iterating on the game. Even if it's just stuff like, you know, they see like a mod thing that they like and they just like add it in as like a booster pack or something. I'd be pretty happy to see something like that. But if they don't, then we'll look at mods in the future. But it would be nice to have these little changes like over time, like maybe every like nine months. They just do a like slight balance patch. And then just see how, like, you know, the game plays then. Maybe different synergies become viable and so on and so forth. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching this elongated video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you next time. And just to remind you, next time we'll be going to episode 196. So from 196 to 203, we'll be on the old patch. So apologies that you're going to get seven episodes. No, eight episodes, sorry. That will be on the old patch. But then after that, we'll be on the new patch. And we'll be winning runs. Right? Right? See you then.